Nice start. You build their offense with the big guy, Montrock, inside. I've often said offensive and defensive efficiency starts with a big guy. And this big guy is certainly quality. And that's what they were doing, getting the ball inside. Eichstein could have went inside a lot more in getting the ball inside to Howard or to Weber and get them to the base now line, but they, did, but they did not do it. They shot more threes than they've shown in the past. Shot 15, came up with five. Polinka shot two big ones early in the game. Yes, I think the defense of Carolina forces you to play a lot of perimeter basketball. You're unable to get it down low. Howard didn't get the turnaround jump shot we've seen all year. Weber didn't get the drop step and curl and jam. And all that is because of the effectiveness outside. The trapping key. It's the system of Gene Smith. It has produced yet another national championship, his second. And Eric Montross speaks about that system. Well, I think that um, our game plan, one of our game plans, was definitely to wear them down because we knew they didn't play an awful lot of awful lot of guys, and um, I think that we had the capability to go deep. And you saw Matt and Scott playing for two minutes tonight for us, and uh, did a good job at holding that. I think that enabled us, the starters, to get our legs back under us. None given. Unfortunately for Michigan, there were no extra timeouts given either. Let's go to the Superdome and find out what happened and why. Carolina starts fast, Garrett Phelps, the alley to George Lynch. Carolina by five early. And this game had more runs than a silk stocking. Michigan responds to Juan Howard to drive. Wolverines by ten. But the Tar Heels come back on another run. Donald, yes, the Donald, hits the three. The Heels by six and a half. Second half. Here comes Michigan starting fast. Jimmy King off the steal. Send it all. And then Juwan Howard. The alley-oop to... Chris Weber, remember that name. Michigan retakes the lead, but the Tar Heels stay in it. Donald Williams again pulling up for three on the break. The game tied at 58. Under a minute to go. Tar Heels by five. Ray Jackson, is it a three or a two? It's a two. His right foot was on the line. Michigan still down three, but on the ensuing inbound pass, Brian Reese of Carolina steps out of bounds. How can he do that? Michigan ball. Then Jalen Rose. The miss, but Chris Weber, remember that name. The putback, Michigan within one. Then the Tar Heels up one. Pat Sullivan makes just one or two free throws. As you see, he made the first, he missed the second. Weber with the rebound. Now watch him, watch him. Clock running down. He travels there, wasn't called. So he says, hey, I got away with that one. I'll go into the forecourt, and then I'll call a timeout because there's only one problem. They didn't have any timeouts left. Technical foul and possession to Carolina. The Tar Heels go on to win the national championship, 77 to 71. As Chris Weber thinks about what he should not have done. Donald Williams was the MVP. He made 10 out of 14 from three-point range in the Final Four tournament. 25 points in each of the last two games. Dean Smith joins Bob Knight of Indiana, Mike Krzyzewski of Duke, and Benny Crum of Louisville as the only active coaches with two national titles. But Dean Smith has more wins than any of them. 55 and counting. Well, John Saunders, Dick Vitale, and Bill Raftery were in New Orleans for the big game and have more for Sports Center. Thanks, Tom, and welcome to New Orleans. John Saunders with Dick Vitale and Bill Raftery. Something about New Orleans, something about this dome. In 1982, Dean Smith gets some help as James Worthy takes the pass from Freddie Brown, who played for Georgetown. Today, Chris Weber calling a timeout that he did not have and a great championship. Oh, it was a super championship. But you know, John uh, was amazing as you and I were walking over here earlier tonight. Some of the fans were saying, what losers? Forget about it, losers. A quality basketball team, Michigan. They can keep their heads up high. Tremendous achievement going to the final game, two consecutive years in terms of freshmen and sophomores. And hats off to El Dino, to Michelangelo of coaches, and all the Tar Heels for an unbelievable performance. Great players know how many timeouts there are. And I'm sure in the timeout they went over it, made the count that we don't have any left. But Sometimes the emotion of the game, the nature of the game is such as you do forget. And there was a little period of time with timeout fouls, etc., that led to the confusion for a great player who really performed to have them there knocking at the door. Yeah, let's go back over that play because Chris Weber comes up with a big rebound. He actually really kept them in the game late with the rebounding. There goes the call the timeout. Rose, Rose wants the ball. Get him the ball. Get him the ball. But Weber decides to go by himself. And after a travel that wasn't called, he calls Check for the, the timeout. The bench, Michael Talley's applauding, but he's the only one on the bench who apparently thought they had a timeout because you can see the rest of the bench sag. And after the game, that's all anyone wanted to talk out, talk about was the timeout they did not have. Did you hear the you know call timeout at that point? It, it seemed like you looked a little confused when you looked at the guys on the bench. I don't, rem I don't remember. He felt the pressure and um, he felt that he needed to call timeout for everyone calling time out behind him in the background. I think he was on. Um, they put him in a lot of pressure. I knew it. I, I thought we knew it, but apparently 
Uh, it didn't get communicated to the degree that it has to, uh, because otherwise he would not have called the time on. Steve Fisher was more than willing to take the blame, did not want to pass it on to Chris Weber, said they wouldn't even be there without him, which without question is the fact in the matter, mm -hmm. but still, who is the blame? Well, it's his obligation and, and, and to protect his player, and that's what he did, and I'm proud of him as a former coach, as you are, I mean, that's part of your job. I think this is a case of a, a player not understanding with the emotion, not paying attention to business, and it certainly hurt them. I thought the little professor, Steve Fisher, handled it with really tremendous class there in terms of saying, hey, it's my responsibility to communicate it. I thought, he said, I thought I told them, but maybe I didn't communicate it as well as I liked. But it's really so unfortunate, and I hope for Chris, uh, if uh, Chris watches this tape later, really, Put it aside. You've had yourself a great two years. Get ready. I think it's Weber's last jam. I think we'll see him at the NBA take the twenty-some million dollars and be a star at the next he level. Won't, he'll forget about it. He's like, the coaches won't be able to sleep. Are they players? He's going to have a great career. Can you imagine losing the game though if you're a coach thinking about this going to bed? Ooh. You got the rock in your hands. Eleven ticks on the clock. I know where and I you can win it. I mean, <laughs> no, it wouldn't be wrong. Incredible. All right, Weber's last jam is Dick takes us down to Broadway. As a matter of fact. <laughs> All right, let's continue to talk about a guy. Another assignment that they forgot about was Donald Williams. He just found himself free throughout the game. I really don't understand the defensive concept here. Here he pulls up, shoots the jumper. Rose goes out very passively. Now they're going to reverse the ball off the screen. Comes off the screen. They don't step out. He Look at all the bumps, though. He really ran him into the screen really well. Now we're going to see a little inside-outside action. And there's the kickoff. They come at him. Bingo! I mean, he was NBA, nothing but nylon. But he's not done yet. He knocks down another one. He looks like Raftery when he played a face this year. He's corny. <laughs> and that's all those cupcakes. <laughs> and last year, we didn't think he could play, I might add. Yeah, now but, he's getting no, the eye. I had to convince Billy that this kid can play. Last uh, uh, year, he said overrated. I can't believe. Pretty good numbers Donald for an overrated guy. Final for 50 points, 25 tonight. Matching the number of three-pointers he had in the semifinal victory as well. Five of seven. And he was the most valuable player. Well, really, um, it feels great, obviously, but um, now I don't really know how to act. It, it, it was just hitting me tomorrow, but, you know, I, I couldn't have did it by myself. I think I have a great team, and, and they did a great job out there tonight, so I can't take all the credit. I have a great team. When he's on the streets, we scream for him and look for him. We believe in getting it to the hot man. But in the, the Arkansas game was perhaps, in fact, is the Cincinnati game, didn't go to overtime, he wouldn't tell he didn't have a good shooting game. But I'm impressed with him. My gosh, he hasn't done that, uh, what he's done here. Uh, maybe one practice or two, but uh, he was in a different zone. When you guys were coaching, did you ever find yourself in a situation where you've concentrated so much on one aspect, where you told the kids, we must stop this, we must stop this, that somehow somebody else got off on you. I concentrate on a lot of the wrong things, though. <laughs> Williams' humility, I think, is part of the Carolina tradition. Even when you're successful, ignore the plaudits and accept these, uh, you know, the, the win, obviously, as a team. They don't look at stats. He's a wonderful performer, but they did give him a lot of bumps, and he did, in the first half, create on his own. That's part, really, of the Dean Smith system, where they don't even keep minutes on a statistic sheet. How many minutes guys play? They do everything alphabetical rather than with the leading scorer, number one. It's the team concept, and Mr. Dean Smith, he gets his second national championship. He gets the Collins.